You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Football, a comprehensive look at all this week's action in Big Sky Football. Now here's your host, Scott Gerrard. And welcome on in to another episode of This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm John Oglesby, sitting in for Scott Gerrard today. Scotty out today. We'll try and hold the show up in his place. Great weekend of games in the Big Sky. Several notable moments this past weekend. We'll break down the current state of affairs in the Big Sky like no other place. Great lineup of guests this week, as we do every week. We'll be joined in just a moment by Northern Arizona coach Jerome Sowers. Montana quarterback Chad Chalich joining us in the second segment. And then the great one, Stats Craig Haley, coming up in segment number three. That's Austin Horton behind the glass. Let's get going with a recap of this past weekend's games before we catch up with Coach Sowers. First off, Eastern Washington picking up a big 42-21 road win over Cal Poly. Gage Gabrud throwing for over 300 yards yet again. Cooper Cup throwing a pair of touchdown passes while also catching a pass. Big note, Cup now six catches away from breaking the FCS all-time record. So be on the watch for that this weekend as the Eagles on a seven-game winning streak. North Dakota getting a 23-13 road win over Northern Colorado. The Fighting Hawks stay undefeated in Big Sky play. John Santiago rushing for over 200 yards in that game. UND heads into the final weekend of the season with a chance to go a perfect 8-0 and in league play. Southern Utah staying alive in its hopes of earning an at-large bid into the FCS playoffs. They get a 38-21 win over Montana State. Safety Mitch Daly, a pair of interceptions as the Thunderbirds on a two-game win streak. Portland State, the Vikings getting a road win at UC Davis. Vikes beat the Aggies 51-29. Portland State quarterback Alex Caressa throwing for a career high. 384 yards with Nate Tago also scoring a pair of rushing touchdowns. 24-0 run really put that game out of reach as Portland State gets the win. Montana with an offensive eruption at Washington Grizzly Stadium. The Grizz beat Idaho State 62-44. Montana quarterback Chad Challich, who will join us later in the program. Throw seven touchdown passes, also rushes for another. That's a school record for those of you scoring at home. Grizz back on the win column after a two-game slide. And finally, historic moment in Ogden last weekend. Northern Arizona coach Jerome Sowers becomes the all-time wins leader in big, time, big sky history. Thanks to a 33-20 win over Weber State, Lumberjacks controlled early, taking a 20-0 lead in that game. Also, kicker Griffin Roller hitting four field goals as Northern Arizona gets the win. Lumberjacks on a four-game winning streak. Sowers now with 112 career wins, passing up former Nevada coach Chris Alt. And let's go out to the phones and welcome in the head coach of the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks, Coach Jerome Sowers. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks. Coach, I know you came on the program a couple weeks ago, and we appreciate you making time to come back on so soon. We'll get to the milestone that you had this past weekend in a minute, but you're on a four-game winning streak after having some adversity. You lost your starting quarterback. How satisfying has it been to put your see your team put this run together over the past month? Uh, I'm really proud of the of the program, and the coaches and the players alike. And uh, Case Cook is a special player and a special guy. And to, uh, to lose him was, you know, to, to understating that that uh, it affected our team. Certainly, it did. But uh, uh, you know, football's a team sport, and to see our guys rally around our our next guy, Blake Kemp, uh, was was fun to watch. It wasn't easy, but uh, Blake's done a great job of putting the offense on his shoulders and uh, getting us back going the direction that we had wanted to go all along. And uh, we're excited to be in this position to, you know, to be uh, on a win streak and to, uh, you know, play some quality opponents to finish our, our schedule off for uh, the 2016 year. But uh, honestly, I'm really proud of the program. Has this been one of the most resilient groups of players that you've had in your time as a head coach with all they've been through? I'd say they've handled it really well. You know, uh, uh, you know, when, when they talk about the shift in leadership and uh, the shift in roles and responsibilities, and you know, I thought the defensive guys really rose up and, and have played a lot better and are realizing more of their own potential and guys playing the kicking game and just everywhere you possibly could, guys have tried to contribute more and uh, and they've really showed a great deal of, of resiliency in the face of adversity. It was tough being picked one and being you know, having that kind of a disappointing start. But to see them, to, you know, to keep fighting and believing in what we're doing and, and uh, you know, the buy-in's been tremendous. Northern Arizona coach Jerome Sowers joining us. Coach, I want you to take us back all the way the late 90s, put us in the time machine. You're the defensive coordinator at Montana. You're very successful there. 
Then the NAU job opens up and you get it. What was it about NAU all those years ago that appealed to you so much? I just thought that Northern Arizona University was a diamond in the rough. You know, I, I have a deep respect and love for the Big Sky Conference. And, you know, my first year uh, of experience was in actually 85 when I was at Portland State as a running back and yeah, running back coach. And, and then uh, at the University of Montana in 86, the first year of actually being in the conference. And, uh, you know, I always thought Northern Arizona University was, was well located, had the tremendous potential. And, uh, you know, it's. Uh, you know, they just had not had a whole lot of consistency in the program, and I uh, thought if there you know, was a chance to get down there and uh, set some roots in, and uh, you know, build for the long term, that we could accomplish something really special. And uh, nobody in the world thought it would take as long as it has. Certainly, uh, not me, but it, uh, but it has. And uh, I just appreciate the, all the hard work and effort that has gone into this this project and, and this process. And. Um, because there's been a lot of coaches and a lot of players have gone through here, and the fact that I'm still here is a, is a great deal to do with the administration, the boosters, and support people around the program. And so they believed, and, and we believed, and you know, I really believe that you know in the, the 19th year we're achieving new levels of uh, you know of uh, achievement in in uh, the way that we're we're running our program and recruiting, and the way that we're supporting the student athlete experience and. It's just been fun to continue to grow and uh, and and to start realizing what was once a dream a long time ago. You know, you talk about having fun. It's easy to see that you have fun coaching football. Was the fun of coaching what got you into the business to begin with? It really is. I, I mean, you know, football, like a lot of us that are in coaching, football brought value, uh, an increased value into my life. You know, a, a deeper respect for, for working with others and, and, a, and a feeling of self-respect and and uh, what it gave to me, I, I, I don't know if I could have got anywhere else. And my father's a football coach, and so it's always been in my family. And just to see the experience, you know, change lives and affect you know, young men in a positive way. I think it teaches life lessons and, and the experience that you leave with. It doesn't end when you hang your cleats up. It, it prepares you really for uh, what I think is, a, is an improved quality of life. And uh, so... You know, football and coaching football is uh, it's been a lifestyle that, uh, you know, there's been great rewards in, in seeing young men achieve. And uh, that's really what it's all been about for me. Northern Arizona coach Jerome Sowers joining us on this week in Big Sky Football. So you beat Weber State 33-20. You get the Gatorade bath at the end of the game. Now 112 career wins. What goes through your mind when that icy cold Gatorade suddenly falls upon you? I, I didn't. I didn't know that anybody was even really paying attention to that. And it uh, um, was it a big milestone. Yeah, absolutely was. I'm not going to fib about that. But it's really been a culmination of, of a lot of years, and a lot of hard work, and that cold water felt really good. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, it felt great. But uh, you know, we kind of put all that behind us. We got a lot of stuff to do. You know, yet this season, and and uh, we put ourselves to task uh, of, of getting those things accomplished. You know, you talk about that. You got two games left against some good football teams in North Dakota, Southern Utah. Chance of winning a conference title at this point are done, but the motivation to be a spoiler still seems to really be motivating your players. Well, our guys love to play, you know, and I think like good football teams are, any opportunity to play anybody on any given day is is, is, is worth, uh, you know, that kind of effort and preparation. And so our guys are preparing hard. They, they have been, and, and uh, there's – been a great deal of energy in our camp and, and uh, the way we're approaching things. And you know, North Dakota is the, right now they're top of the, the, the whole stack, and those guys are really doing it well. And uh, so we see a challenge in front of us uh, getting on the road and you know, playing against the best, and we'll see how far we've come in the, you know, the last six weeks. Well, Coach, congratulations on all that you've done in your time at NAU. Best of luck this weekend in Grand Forks. We sure appreciate the time. Well, thank you, Mr. Oglesby. I appreciate it a whole bunch. All right. That's one of the great people in this business, Northern Arizona coach Jerome Sowers joining us. Again, NAU at North Dakota this upcoming week. We'll preview that coming up a little bit later in the show. As for us, it's time to take a break. Be back in just a moment with Montana quarterback Chad Challenge. Also take a look at your Root Sports Players of the Week. That's all coming up. Stay with us. You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Football. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, 
every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. The Big Sky Conference has a new app. Search Big Sky Conference on the App Store and Google Play and download the new free Big Sky Conference app. Watch live conference events, connect with Big Sky social media accounts, and access premium exclusive content. The Big Sky Conference app, now available for free on the App Store and Google Play. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. Second segment of This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm John Oglesby sitting in for Scott Gerard. Fans, if you're looking for a place to connect with the Big Sky Conference, look no further than the Big Sky Conference app. Available for free on the App Store and Google Play. Features streaming video, exclusive content, and an easy place to connect with the Big Sky social media accounts. Search Big Sky Conference on the App Store and Google Play and connect with us for free. Yes, Austin, it's for free. All right, we'll be joined in just a moment by Montana quarterback Chad Challenge. First, let's take a look back and review our Root Sports Players of the Week. Southern Utah safety Mitch Daly earning your Root Sports Defensive Player of the Week. Daly, eight tackles, two interceptions as Southern Utah earns a 38-21 win over Montana State. T-Birds with a big in-state FBS game this weekend. Northern Arizona kicker Griffin Roller, your Root Sports Special Teams Player of the Week. We just heard a moment ago from NAU coach Jerome Sowers. Roller, a big part of that win, four for four on field goals. He had two field goals hit the uprights and bounce in. Pretty incredible stuff. He scored a total of 15 points in NAU's 33-20 win over Weber State. Finally, the man of the segment at the very least, Montana quarterback Chad Challich, this week's Root Sports Offensive Player of the Week. Challich threw seven touchdown passes, setting a Montana record in a Grizz 62-44 win. Over Idaho State, again, Root Sports, your official television partner of the Big Sky Conference. And with that, Let's go out to the phones and welcome in the quarterback of the Montana Grizzlies, Chad Challenge. How are you, Chad? I'm good. How are you? Hey, I'm doing real well. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. You know, last week as a quarterback, such a big game for you. Can you tell when you're getting ready for a game during that week? That Can you tell you're going to have a good week like you had? Um, yeah, you can. Uh, just just the preparation that you that leads up to the game. You know, it really helps. And, you know, the coach has got me really ready for the game of, like, learning the game plan and, you know, going out and practice and executing practice and knowing where I have to go with the ball. And that just translates to the game. You know, you've been the backup for most of the season for Brady Gustafson. Then this past week, you're the starter. How do you handle your role as a backup? Because I imagine no matter how hard you work and how humble you are, it's still got to be a little frustrating at times. Yeah, you know, it's just just a game of football. You know, there's unlike other positions, there's only one quarterback that can be on the field at a time. And so being the backup role, you know, you just have to just prepare like you're going to be the start every week because, you know, um, you know, just one play, you know, the starting quarterback can go down. You have to be ready to go in and win the game for your team. So, you know, I just prepare every week like I'm going to be the starter. And, you know, I got the – got to start and you know went out and our receivers made just played a really really good game and went up and caught the ball and made plays and you know our offensive line stepped up and you know got the running game which running game going which got our passing game going montana quarterback chad challenge joining us on this week in big sky football we've seen some quarterback competitions before that have gotten a little nasty but it seems pretty good in missoula how would you describe the relationship all of the quarterbacks have uh, you know, it's great. Um, you know, we're really close and, you know, we, uh, we're really positive with each other and, you know, we, we hang out a lot outside of football and, you know, we always go over to each other's houses and just hang out with each other. So, you know, our relationship is, is really good. So when you go into a big game like that, I imagine it's because of a great pregame routine. What's your game day routine mm -hmm. like? Do you have a certain pregame meal you like, certain music you listen to? Take us through that. 
Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty laid back. Um, you know, we have our our pregame ritual that we do as a team that we go and eat as a team, and then we do our Grizz walk. And you know, I um, go to the locker room, kind of prepare, kind of go over you know the game plan and stuff that we uh, coaches want us to do, and go out on the field and you know warm up a little bit, come back and listen to some music and you know, then get ready to go. Okay, Chad, we got about a minute or so left, but there's one more question I have to ask you. You know, your role going forward, you guys have two weeks left in the regular season. Whatever your role is throughout the rest of the season and into the postseason, how will you continue to prepare for that? Uh, Just like I do every week, you know, whatever coach uh, plan is, you go going forward, you know, I'm just going to come out, prepare like I always do and I always have and you know, it's my, my last season, so I'm just going to enjoy it. Well, Chad, we sure appreciate having you on. Thanks so much for making some time with us, and best of luck this weekend as you travel down to northern Colorado. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Okay, that is Montana quarterback Chad Challenge. Grizz have got an interesting two-game stretch coming up. They're on the road against northern Colorado, and then they are at home to end the season in the Brawl of the Wild against Montana State. You can catch that game, as always, on Root Sports coming up on November 19th. Once again, that's Montana quarterback Chad Challenge joining us on This Week in Big Sky Football. We'll take a short break. We'll come back, be joined by Stats Craig Haley. It's all coming up in the final segment of this week's episode of This Week in Big Sky Football. Stay with us. The Big Sky Conference has a new app. Search Big Sky Conference on the App Store and Google Play and download the new free Big Sky Conference app. Watch live conference events, connect with Big Sky social media accounts, and access premium exclusive content. The Big Sky Conference app, now available for free on the App Store and Google Play. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. This week in Big Sky Football. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm John Oglesby sitting in for Scott Gerard. We'll be joined in just a moment by the one and the only Mr. Craig Haley of Stats. First, let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for games this weekend where you can watch them. First off, it's Cal Poly and Weber State battling at Noon Mountain and Ogden. Both contenders for an at-large FCS playoff bid. You can catch that game on KJazz as well as WatchBigSky.com. Montana and Northern Colorado kick off at noon as the Grizz continue to claw towards the postseason. That game available on Cal's Media, Comcast Entertainment Television, and WatchBigSky.com. Northern Arizona traveling to play top 10 North Dakota, trying to finish off an undefeated conference season, are the Fighting Hawks. That game kicking off at 1 p.m. Central. Catch it on Midco Sports Network as well as WatchBigSky.com. Southern Utah taking on in-state foe BYU. It's a 1 p.m. Mountain Time kickoff in Provo, Utah. A lot of great subplots in this game. You can see it all on BYU TV. UC Davis, Montana State battle at 1.30 Mountain from Bozeman. Watch that game on Root Sports Northwest as well as DirecTV's audience network. Root Sports, the official television partner of the Big Sky Conference. Eastern Washington hosting Idaho State. It's senior day in Cheney. That game kicking off 3.30 Pacific. It's available on SWX as well as WatchBigSky.com. Finally, Portland State and Sacramento State duel from Central California's Hornet Stadium. Kickoff time, 6 p.m. on WatchBigSky.com. Remember, WatchBigSky.com, your home for Big Sky Conference football, volleyball, and men's and women's basketball games. Find those and more at WatchBigSky.com. All right, time to go out to the phones. Welcome in a longtime friend of the program and the king of FCS football, the Craig Haley from Stats. How are you, Craig? 
I'm doing well. I'm, I'm wondering if Scott Gerard knows knows about Wally Pip and Lou Gehrig with you stepping in today. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Right. All right. Let's get <laughs> let's get to the football here. Sure. Started out where we do every weekend in Cheney, Washington, with Eastern Washington, Eastern with a. 42-21 road win over Cal Poly. I know the Eagles have impressed everyone all season, but did that defensive performance change your perspective of how deep they can go in this postseason? Indeed. It made me look a little closer, John. I mean, the Eagles have played nine games, and the three lowest scoring games for their defense have been these last three games. I mean, they, they had veterans coming back. You know, it's the second year under defensive coordinator Jeff Schmetting. So I think improvement was inevitable, and, and we're seeing it. I mean, you know, I do think they're going to face some terrific offenses in the playoffs that it's going to come down to winning high-scoring games. But, yes, it stands out that the defense has, has matured. So an interesting discussion has kind of percolated around the big sky about who's more valuable to Eastern Washington. Is it Cooper Cup or is it quarterback Gage Gabrud? In your mind, should one of those be viewed as being more valuable or more likely to get postseason awards than the other? <laughs> That's a great question. I, you know, the ball is always in, you know, is in Gage's hands much more than Cooper's. But I do think on the team Everybody must fall in line behind Cooper because he's the greatest wide receiver in FCS history. I mean, he's the veteran that, you know, everybody's going to line up behind. But I, I think Gage has had the better season. Cooper is, is the name that everybody knows, you know, including the awards voters around the nation. You know, it doesn't hurt Cooper to have all those all-time records, and he's obviously about to set another one this week. I, I think it could go either way. I do think Gage has had the better season. All right. Vote for Gage Gabrud. Mark that one down, Austin. <laughs> Turning our attention to North Dakota, the Fighting Hawks. They didn't have Keaton Studs Rude last weekend. They still found a way to get a win. If UND can finish the conference season undefeated on a nine game win streak, does this team deserve a seed in the FCS playoffs? Well, I did feel that way a week ago, and then the playoff selection committee didn't have UND in its first top ten rankings. You know, Charleston Southern has clearly fallen out of the mix, you know, ahead of uh, UND after, you know, Charleston Southern lost. So that's one obstacle down. You know, maybe Richmond losing, that's another obstacle. I do feel if UND finishes 9-2 and two and, 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 you know, goes unbeaten in the big sky, I'd have to think, yes, they'll have a seed. Cal Poly, Weber State, they got a big matchup in Ogden this weekend. This game kind of serving as a pseudo-elimination game for the FCS postseason. Do you have any inclinations on how this one is going to go? Well, no doubt it's a, it's a must-win for both teams' playoff hopes. I mean, I, you know, Cal Poly appears to be losing a little steam over, you know, say the last three games. You know, they, they've been, you know, they've had a terrific season, but at the same time, they, you know, they need to pick it up again here in the late stretch. I have to think they have one more push in them because they're closer to that playoff bid than Weber State. I know it's a road game, but I, I do think, you know, Cal Poly with, with the run game should be able to handle Weber State. So I want to talk about Northern Arizona for a moment. Now, they're not part of the playoff conversation because of how some things went earlier in the season, but Jerome Sowers joined us in the first segment. He's coached mm -hmm. this team to four straight wins after losing an All-American quarterback. If the Lumberjacks finish the season with a, a winning record in league and overall play, does Jerome Sowers, in your mind, deserve serious consideration for league coach of the year? Well, obviously, yes. They, they've rebounded quite nicely, and, and, and I do think they can go up there and, and win this week, obviously as an underdog, but they're on such a roll. I'd have to say Big Sky Coach of the Year honors start and end with Bubba Schweiger at UND or Bo Baldwin at, at Eastern Washington, no matter how UND finishes, or excuse me, Northern Arizona finishes. You know, I, I think Coach Sowers is probably, um, you know, he deserves credit for keeping his team focused after starting one and four. But at the same time, you know, what's happened at UND and Eastern Washington really, you know, stands out. All right. Like you said, that playoff top 10 came out last weekend, the initial rankings from the committee. Were you comfortable with those rankings? Did you feel there were a few teams on there that maybe shouldn't have been or teams that weren't on there that should have been? What were some of your thoughts? Well, a week ago, yeah, I had North Dakota as my eighth seed, and then obviously they weren't in the, the top ten with the committee. I, uh, Yeah, I wasn't, you know, fully uh, – 
you know, approving of them or, or in agreement with them, I should say. But, you know, again, they, they can change along the way. I mean, there's going kind to of be upsets and, and teams losing in the next yeah. two weeks. That'll change things. You know, I do think Eastern Washington, you know, is – clearly going to uh, be a high seed. I, I've had them the number two seed for a long time. You know, I, I do think North Dakota, if they do, you know, win this weekend and, and finish undefeated, then they kind of wait and, and see what happens next week. You know, maybe a Central Arkansas loses. Maybe somebody else, you know, UND will be on a bye. So I, I do think it, it's very possible they, they could be a, a second seed for the big sky. You know, as I've been saying, Cal Poly and, and Montana are probably next in the pecking order. But, you know, it's all going to depend on what, what happens. I mean, you can make the case that there'll be a bunch of, you know, seven and four teams in the big sky, and then you sort of have to, you know, go through uh, which one has the stronger re- resume. No doubt about that. Craig Haley from Stats joining us. You talk about that buy for UND the last week of the season, Craig. Do you see that helping the Fighting Hawks, or does it hurt them? Is it too early to tell? What are your thoughts? Well, if they wind up with a seed and, and, and you know, then they'd be having three weeks off yeah. between games, which, yeah, nobody wants that scenario. I mean, it happens going into the national championship game, but then it's happening to just – that's happening to both teams. Here it would be a case of, of UND playing a team that, you know, had just come off of a first-round game the week prior. So, yeah, that, that can hurt them. I do like all programs that have their bye mixed in during the middle of the season. Um, but you know, there's nothing that can be changed at this point. I mean, North Dakota just has to go out and win and, and, and see what happens. Finally, Craig, do we have any movement in that <laughs> top five of yours, or is it pretty consistent right about now? Well, Scott's been mad at me probably for not – because we've been talking about the same order for about a month. But, uh, you know, I think now, you know, Richmond losing the JMU, you know, James Madison or the Citadel can be your uh, – you know, be – it's your pick who, who number five is. They're so close. You know, it, it is. It has been a tough year for anybody, for a team to crack anybody's top of the rankings. Just about everybody has the top, the same top six teams. And out of those six, you're talking about a combined four losses. Yeah, it's you incredible. Know, the very elite teams, yes, are, are just doing well. No doubt about that. Well, Craig, thanks for uh, keeping me company here on this week <laughs> of Big Sky Football with Scott being out. I appreciate it. Sure. Thank you very much, John. All right. That's Craig Haley of Stats joining us for our weekly national FCS conversation. Go to fcs.football for everything that Craig does. He's certainly one of the best. That's going to do it for us. Big thanks out to all of our guests. Also, special thanks to the man who truly puts this show together each and every week. That's the man behind the glass, Austin Horton. I'm John Oglesby saying thanks so much for joining us this week. Scott Gerard will be back next week. Until then, enjoy this week at Big Sky Football. Goodbye, everybody.